listen for a moment, let him hear me tell my tale. The jury says he's guilty, and says the judge says he. For life, me lad, I'm sending you across the stormy sea. Got a water backy for a man? I haven't got any. What a tinker's touch is all I want, young sir. Don't smoke. Bloody miser. The hell roast in hell. God strike me dead. the colonies. I have seen men transported from their native land for the most trivial of misdemeanors, turned at the hands of their keepers into little short of beasts. I have seen my own son pitting himself against the harshness of terrain and climate turn from my ways to those I scarcely recognize, nor wish to. How can it be otherwise in a place steeped in blood, in cruelties, in barbarism, where life counts for so little, where both system and terrain corrupt and brutalize? Good day to you, sir. What can I do for you? Lovely burn. Stay in the stockpot, and he'll be as tender as butter. No, no thank you. I'm, I'm not hungry, sir. Thank you. Uh, can I help you in any way? Oh, uh, a man took up land here, sir. Lieutenant Furbeck. You have a way to go yet. I'll show you. You go down there behind the house, you see, and you see tracks leading to the west for about 20 miles. You'll find him there. And uh, stay to the tracks while you get lost. If you get lost out there, maybe you'll die. Thank you, sir. Oh, they're all frightened when they first come here. Like me. Long way from home. Did he say the Furbex? Yes. Perhaps a friend, do you think? Listen, why don't you catch him up and you tell him your name is Anna and you must know everybody's business. Now dress the bird for dinner. March 18th, 1830. Time and distance have lost meaning while we, pygmy mortals, violate a wilderness by our presence, ravish a great silence with the sound of our labors, remote yet secure in our solitude, welcoming a stranger yet afraid of him, knowing not who or what he is, whether he be what he claims or is corrupt corrupted by the savagery about us.
Lieutenant Furbeck home, please? I'll get him for you. To see me. Look at Matthew. Arthur Coke. Well, I didn't think you'd remember. It was. I was only eight at the time, so we used to live three miles away from you. Back home. It was a Cope. Uh, handyman. They moved somewhere? It went to London, sir. James Cope. My father. Well, well. Uh, what's brought you here all this way? Well, I, I was in Sydney, sir. Uh, someone told me you were here. But I didn't know anyone there. them, mister? Sheep. If you're looking for an owner's mark, there isn't one. There was a flock yonder. Don't know if that's the one you found. They're on my land, they're mine. I'd take care with strange stock if I was you, mister. I'd mind my business, Shepherd. This is Arthur Cope. He's from home. This is home. So it's sheep stealing now, is it? What would you have done? Left them to the dingoes? Or a nice Christian offering to the blacks? It's every ounce of wool we can get before we sink. I'm sight more useful than him. Do we have to take in every stray says good morning to you? You seem to approve everything about this country except its customs. Well, it's no custom of mine. And it's as well I am the head of the family and not you. You're trying to remember your manners wherever you are. going to coddle them. Make sure they're better than the ones we bought. Oh, there's not much help. I should have thought it was the least he could do. He was a clerk in Sydney. Did you know? Because he could write. Oh, there's not so many can. He should have stuck to it.
don't like it out here, do you? No. It isn't what we expected, either. Heat and hard work. Flies. Father hates it that we're squatters. It's for animals. As soon as we have time, Father's going to plant willow trees. We had them at home. I've seen a man go to the gallows. And they stood there like it was nothing. I took ill and they laughed at me. I've seen a man beaten by soldiers and he's begging them to finish him off. A black was murdered. Three stockmen roasted him just to see what he tasted like. And I've seen men screaming and crying, being lashed and their skin falling on the ground and the dogs eating it up. No willow trees would make this England. What's that for? Rations. Who's short? Everyone has what he needs. Here. Kill it. Go on. to do it. Well, you eat bloody meat, don't you? We've got another stomach to feed, if you can call it that, gutless bastard. Leave him, Luke. Not everyone's like you, which is just as well sometimes. So you don't want it? Well, we can't waste it. Let's see you skin it, then. I'll show you. We'll have to do it sooner or later. God, I hate it here! Give it time. Arthur says it's for animals. So that's it. Well, he can keep his opinions where they're bloody wanted. Mr. Luke, the way he's gone. 
<laughs> you. If you had one of that pretty bonnet, he'd notice you then. Anna. Look, it's a Schweinehund. Look, look, always look upsets you. Why do you bother with him? And, and Jessie, uh, she's all right? She infatuates herself with other cope and nobody. Because he comes from her home. Uh, yes, home. But they know nothing about him. Who is he? Where does he come from? Anna, Anna, here we do not ask these things. They have no consequence. The past is past. But we should know. <laughs> Because you must know everything, eh? Because he's not what he says. Anna, it's better we mind our own business. You're like father. But why is it so important? Because he ran away. What do you mean, ran away? When I came with a trooper, he ran away. Just a minute. All right. Let's see what I can find out. It's really of no importance what you do. Anna! Thus prompted, with no reasons more than to satisfy curiosity and repair wounded pride, did the processes of law begin their grim march. September the 4th, 1830. Winter has gone, and spring, in September if you please, smiles in its wake. Jessie is unhappy. She spends more and more of her time with Arthur. They walk the wild paths. Comforting, I think, and finding comfort. He has been with us for six months, barely earning his keep and showing no inclination to move on. Perhaps Jassy has probed his sorrows, knows something of his past, but I know little more of him now than when he came. Luke despises him, as I think he despises us all. And were it not for Jassy, we'd have done with him. What are all those skins in the yard? Dingoes killed 11 sheep last night. And bloody Morgan calls himself a shepherd. You'll not speak like that in my house. We need more hurdles. A dingo I'm worried about sleeps out the back there. You never let go, do you? No, I don't. I promised her I'd make this place a kingdom. Some spineless whelp turns her head. So she hates everything we believe, everything we've worked for, everything we've done. In five minutes, he tears down what has taken as many months to build. Oh, by God, I don't let go. Seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two. Hey, you know what you've done, don't you? You counted forty twice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen,
Get up. Help me, Lou. Please, help me. Hey, look, I don't care what you've done or what they want you for. I don't care. I do know what you've done to me, and I hope they do flog you. Get up. fell in love with the daughter of a solicitor. The solicitor forbade him to see her, and Arthur struck him. Isn't that romantic? He wouldn't be transported for that. Man, I've been sent here for much less. A child here for stealing a handkerchief. He said he was a clerk in Sydney. They put him to work in a government store. Some things were stolen, and the officer in charge accused Arthur. More likely the officer. How can you say such a thing? Why not? An officer of the Crown? It's a strange country, Mr. Furbeck. Papa says it has a bad influence on all who come here. Why did he run away? They were going to flog him. Couldn't have done it. Poor devil. Poor devil. Come, little sparrow, you must not gruntle. Disgruntled, father. Hmm? Yes? We would have caught him in the end. What will you do to him? Anna, I think he's best to be done. Let him answer me, Mr. Furbeck. What will happen to him? Anna, Anna, please. Tell me. You must think I'm a very cruel man, Miss Anna. But the laws I administer are not my making. If they were, they would be different. It's my mistake. I thought you were someone with authority. Uh, Miss Anna, please. What will you do to him? Destroy him. Mr. Faulkner. Good morning. I've just been admiring your house. It's the most... I have a great deal to do, Mr... Oh, oh yes, of course. I'm sorry. Furbeck, sir. I've come on behalf of a young man who will be appearing before your court. His name is Cope. Uh, Arthur Cope. He was a clerk in one of the government stores. What's he charged with? I'm afraid he ran away. But I'm quite certain that, given a chance, he'll put himself together, give no more trouble. I wish it was as easy, Mr. Herbeck. I don't think you've been in our colony very long. No, sir. We have gentlemen here who've devoted themselves gravely and earnestly to the matter of reform. To try to discover if the criminal mind is capable of correction. There would be nothing to suggest it. They hold the view, a view that I share, that a criminal does not reform. He goes indeed from bad to worse. Cope has been most foolish. I wouldn't argue with that. But criminal, he was not of their kind, sir. I know the man and knew his father. He's most anxious to reform. We are too often fooled by fools, Mr. Furbeck. You must know gentlemen who have shown kindness to their sons only to have them go their own way, turn against them. We are too old to judge the young. You will judge him in court. On the evidence, sir. Not character. The law will guide us. And God help him. I'm only sorry that in view of the previous sentence imposed in another district and unable to be carried out for theft from a government store, and in consideration of the added crime of stealing the clothes he stands in, my jurisdiction in this court is limited. On your feet. The prisoner will receive 50 lashes carried out tomorrow morning. I've heard an appeal on your behalf, 
And I'm most anxious that you should be given every encouragement to improve yourself. In the hope it may help bring you to your senses and to remind you of your position in the colony and the trust that your friends place in you, I'll further sentence you to a period of four months with an iron. This does bring a man nearer to his maker. I think it makes him harder. Are you ready, Scourger? Ready. Start the count. One. <laughs> two. <laughs> three. <laughs> four. Separated. A bit late for that with scab, mister. It'll be through the flock. Quickly, you don't! the solid rock. There'll be a cubic yard a man a day, or 25 lashes. When I get them chains off, I'm going to come back and slit that bastard's guts. going to let him die real slow with the meat ants on him. Don't care if they do hang me for it. Who spoke? I 
I came to the bush of Australia. Will they be all right? We have to pray. People say there's nothing you can do. I got a famous lot. Some died of hunger, some of rot. The remainder a dose of scab they got in this pestered land of Australia. <laughs> from food. They're making a new road. Will you be all right? Oh, Jesse. Don't say, can I? I can't accept parcels for prisoners. It's from Jesse. It means such a lot. Doesn't do to become involved. But we are. It's my fault. And Miss Jesse, is she involved? Yes. Please, William. All right. Let's see if he gets it. Out of the coat! Lieutenant Jordan! It's charity for the scum now, is it? For prisoner coat! Twenty-five lashes. January the 11th, 1831. Our flock diminishes. The disease has firm command. I can see no end to it but the worst. We are like grave robbers, stripping the wool from doomed creatures, that our loss shall not be total. But its condition is poor and will bring us little recompense. Price of gully raking, little brother. At least we'll be saving something. I beg to submit, Your Excellency, a recommendation on behalf of a government man, Arthur Cope, whose case will be known to you from letters from a former naval lieutenant, Jason Furbeck, for whose integrity and sincerity I can vouch. Ah, uh, Harwood. Now, have a look at this, will you? It's about the third I've had. The family wants me to intervene in some prisoner's case. Who are the Furbecks, anyway? They're squatters, sir. Oh, for heaven's sake, draft something, will you? Uh, there's another one, sir. Uh, Only it's from Lieutenant Robart, sir, Lord Cardin's nephew, the 17th. Lord Cardin's nephew? Yeah, he's got a sister, you know, Lady Caroline. Here. Oh, God, no. Richmond. Damn fine horsewoman. He's recommending a ticket of leave, sir. And he's willing to take responsibility. Well, have a look at it. There's a good fellow. Don't want to upset Carden, eh? No, indeed, sir.
died in the night, and a further eight were slaughtered this morning, beyond any help we could give to save them. The scab disease has firm hold, and we know of no cure. The losses are calamitous. Back where we started. The ewes will be learning soon. Bloody place! I'll lick you yet! What he is, Anna. And then we flog him for being it. He's not going to be flogged again. Yes. What about his ticket of leave? I'll do what I can.
hope to be afraid, isn't it? Don't move. What do you want? You headed me in, hmm? And now I'm going to pay you back. The thing is giving you courage, isn't it? Well, it's not holding it. It's using it. You haven't got the guts. I'll use it. Look, getting breakfast. Wouldn't pheasant be nice? Nothing to reload it with. That's right. It's you against me now. Equal terms. You wouldn't have got away. You didn't give me a chance. I'd have got you anyway. so much as touch me with that thing, I swear it'll kill you. I waited. I waited through hell for this. I'll grant you one thing. It's made a bastard of you, same as the rest of us. Hasn't it? <laughs> Hasn't it made a bastard of you? <laughs> have to. It's your only way. Only you don't have the guts. You realize, don't you? If you don't, they'll only take you back. someone beside yourself to be responsible for. Untie this. Undo this. Look, it's not you, it's not me. It's this lousy place. 
that takes everything decent, kills it, everything. Stay there till it gets dark. Then get the hell out. Soldier boy, it's the animals will win one day. 